pulled out kind of stu individual student, because I, I know her students, kind of individual student progress and gaps as opposed to um, the like class-wide trends. Class -wide trends. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think both is helpful, by the right. way. So we'll right, talk right, about right. Um, I was starting, I started at that level. I can't do that right now, but, so, yeah, so I just pulled out, well, the first thing I just noticed overall is that all of her students are like at 60% or above. Mm -hmm. So the gaps are not as, as humongous as they mm -hmm. could be. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no students in the 30s or 40s or the only 50s, like a 59. Yeah. Um, so the gap is a little bit smaller than I actually thought based on our conversations. So mm -hmm. that was like one of the first just quick things I noticed and that. Is that something that you plan to point out to her? Or did, did we talked, it we talked her, about like, it. When I look at your data, mm -hmm. things don't really seem as bad as. We talked about it and I've seen her during math mm -hmm. um, and students are practicing. So, okay, so I want to get there just yet. Let me jump in then. Um, and so that was just the first thing is that the gap isn't huge, um, but the top performing is also not, is still in the 80s range. So the gap itself is a little bit smaller, but there's no like top, but like the students who are mastering the most content are even mastering like all the content mm -hmm. or in the 90s in a way where it's like, I believe that they can do this all the time. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so then I just start putting children into two different groups, um, especially because I know most of her kids, um, and kind of thinking through what I know those kids do in class. Um, Can I pause there for just yeah. a second? Because if we're, if we're starting on the student we level, one of the okay. things that I was just thinking about was just like, you're right, the, the overall class mm -hmm. gap doesn't go beyond 60% yeah. or 59%. It's like split, and it's split like half is. But it's very split. It is mm -hmm. like there are six kids that are above 80. Mm -hmm average mastery mm -hmm. and then there are seven kids who are below 70, below 70. average mm -hmm. mastery and then there are only two kids who are in the middle mm -hmm. and so really she has like the top group the mm -hmm. top group or the low group mm -hmm. and and that's mm -hmm. a fascinating thing to see so mm -hmm. I, I kind of wonder why that exists in our classroom mm -hmm. but uh, you're were, were you about to describe some of the no, top group I mean, kids or some of the low group kids not really I because I think that's one of my first questions like yeah when I think about these six kids who are the top like you know, Chanel, Jordan, Charles, Martin, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Smile. what's happening with them? Like what mm -hmm. is it that's causing them to be in the mm -hmm. top, top group? Is mm -hmm. she, is she doing something extra for them? Is she targeting them? Is that not happening in her practice? Like, um, what are they doing I've, that's helping I them mean, to get there? I think I know more about what the gaps than Or so like for the low group, well, when she, I think about like mm -hmm. Jimmy or Travion mm -hmm. or, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening for that? And Kittist and stuff. Um, for those well, folks. the way her, she organizes her block is that She doesn't do math centers, and so when she does her block, some kids then who are getting it mm -hmm. kind of stay and do stuff independently, and then she pulls a group to the carpet. And so the times I've been in there for math, it's been a little commotion and chaotic because there's kids on the carpet who are trying to work with her, and then there's kids who are kind of doing it independently. And so the kids who are working independently aren't getting anyone checking them. So when I was in there a couple weeks ago, they were doing something with remainders, and Samaya um, was making tons of errors, but she just kept going. She's in the progress group, um, but... Um, so she's at 83% all the Yeah. Um, and, but even so, like, she's making all these errors and no one's correcting her because she's working just independently for most of her half of the block that day. And so I don't know if that's how it is every day. Mm -hmm. And then like the students who are in that group who are working independently who she felt during the lesson could do it, mm -hmm. were done very quickly and then moved on to like math games. Mm -hmm. And so, but if you notice, like they're not doing, they're still just in the 80s where it's not even like mm -hmm. So for, level. for some of these progress cats mm -hmm. who are above 80%, yeah, they're higher than their peers right now, but you've seen evidence mm -hmm. that they are still not fully grasping the material, yeah. mm -hmm. that they are mastering at a higher level than their mm -hmm. peers. I mean, I think that could be that could be right. I, one of the things I'm thinking about is just like, when I looked at trends across mm -hmm. the learning goals, mm -hmm. um, 
it's a it's an interesting split. So units one through three, everybody did Everyone everybody did. did really well. Like and units one through three is graphs and data, mm -hmm. you know, which is in a fairly easier you know, unit. I, I don't know if this tracker, to be honest with you, because I tracked her first unit and they got a fifty five percent and then I gave her back this tracker to them finish tracking. So I don't know if she's put something in wrong. Either I that. I mean, I don't know if it's she put something. Or she maybe she reassessed. Re reassessed. Right. So that's why I need that to actually find to out. Ask. To be honest. Mm -hmm. But but if these numbers are accurate, like okay, so for units one through three, students did well on it on easier units like right. adding, subtracting, mm -hmm. basic computation, graphing, graphing mm -hmm. data yep. analysis. And now but when we got to units four, mm -hmm. five, and six, which is mm -hmm. Problem solving, mm -hmm. estimation, multiplication. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the class averages was 59 mm -hmm. um, for multiplication, mm -hmm. uh, 67 for estimation with word problems, and then six in the low 60s for all of the word problem mm -hmm. stuff, which would corroborate what your th earlier theory was, which is like, you know, even the kids who are who are doing really well in earlier units, their yeah. averages go down right. when they get to. Right here. You know, like these mm -hmm. word problems mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. like the problem solving. You know, mm -hmm. some of these kids who are in the eighties, you know, have a sixty-seven, mm -hmm. yep. a forty-four, a seventy-eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the ones who aren't doing well, they are they go mm -hmm. even work even further to thirty-threes, mm fifties. -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so her and I did talk about that in our last meeting last week, um, briefly, just about. Um, how to teach problem word problems to third grade children because she just didn't even know where to start. Mm -hmm. And so she was struggling with how to get children to understand the problem, solve it and answer it in like a process and there were missing there were some steps missing when she showed me how she was having kids do it. Mm -hmm. So they went from like circling and underlying numbers to solving, but they're not really understanding what they're circling and underlining mm -hmm. and then what the questions even ask them to then solve it. So there just wasn't so she wasn't teaching them the process for how to. It was like, literally solve like word underline problem. the words that are telling you what Order. to do, like in all, and circle numbers. But they didn't understand why. They had no idea what's going. They're just circling, underlying things. And let me ask you a question. So, even the lesson that you saw, mm -hmm. like, I don't know if it was a word problem lesson no, or if it was wasn't. a regular lesson. Like, it, was, it was a skill based lesson. Like computation, mm -hmm. adding, subtraction, whatever. Mm -hmm. But even then, like, it sounds like if she's structuring her lessons mm -hmm. in a way that she doesn't really know how the on task group mm -hmm. where the higher group is supposed to be working independently mm -hmm. and they're not being mm -hmm. monitored effectively when they get to harder material mm -hmm. they for sure aren't not mastering right. it because they right. haven't you know fully been set mm -hmm. up to do well in the independent mm -hmm. practice time I mean, it might be something to think about like mm -hmm. should when, when you go see her should mm -hmm. you see the independent part of her practice i'm going to see her whole lesson too. okay so you can see like how mm -hmm. she sets mm -hmm. it today up I was and only how seeing, she puts them into today i was practice. only if we were going to go today i was only seeing the first half Okay. Because I, based on how she's planning and how her students are explaining content to me, I think she's missing key points in her lessons. Um, which makes sense because when we co-investigated last week, she started off with, I think I need help planning. 